Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and tonight I'm super excited. We are talking all about indoor recess and dance party because we do dance parties during indoor recess and we also do a dance party every Friday. I'm going to move a little bit. Looks like I got like a sun behind me. Oh well. Okay, so it's super, super cold out, right? And it's, it's hard to go outside. Like we haven't been outside in like a week. We finally got outside to go. We got to go outside today, but we're not gonna be able to go outside again. So I have kind of set up my room like I would for indoor recess. And these are tried and true things. Some of these things I've done for a long time. Some are brand new ideas, but I've all tried them in a classroom with 18 kiddos when I taught full day. Yes, you can do inside recess with 18 kids. You can, I promise. And it, you'll thank you'll thank me because they will be much calmer if you do some of these things to get out their energy. Um, yeah, and then I also do these things with my half day class, which is what I teach now in my home. And it's, um, I have um, up, to, up to nine kids a day. So to start off, I kind of break my indoor recess down into areas of my classroom. Pop in the comments what your favorite um, inside recess thing is to do in your classroom, because maybe we'll get some other ideas that way from each other. So pop your favorite thing to do in the comments, and then hopefully maybe I'll have some new ones um, for you too. So I break my inside recess up into kind of areas of my room. And I have five centers in my room. I have blocks, art, library, discovery, and pretend. So I kind of break my... Um, inside recess up into those areas because they, they know those defined areas in the classroom. So when I say in the art center we have big Legos, they know what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk around and kind of show you the different things I put out in each center. And the first time we do inside recess, I start with maybe like three things or four things. And I usually start with things that we've done during maybe music of movement, and then I um, add one new thing each time. That way it's not all completely new things um, and they're like going bonkers and they don't know how to play anything or kind of like how to regulate themselves either. So I put out usually three things they know and then one new thing. So I'm going to flip this around and I'm walk we're going to walk around. Okay, so I'm going to kind of give you like a backup view of my classroom. So you can kind of just get your senses of kind of how this works. So here's my pretend area. And then over there you can see my circle. And then there's discovery. Back there is blocks. Over here is art. And then kind of where I was is kind of, I call it like the cubby area. So in my cubby area, it's kind of a large space. So we do big gross motor things. So I will have out one of these three things. So we play um, soccer or hockey during inside recess. And what I use is I use this tub and I just put balls in it. And those balls I got from actually um, Buffalo Wild Wings and one of the claw machines. Um, but you can use um, any softball that, so like if it hits something, it's not gonna let, like if it hits this up here, like it doesn't hurt anything um, or break anything. So they're not like super hard, but they're still um, perfect size for them. And then I cut pool noodles in half for um, ho um, hockey sticks. So all they do is they get out this ball and then they use the pool noodle and hit it in the, hit it in the goal. And I have four pool noodles out so that way four kids can play it um, at a time. And then how I store it is I got this little bag from the dollar store and at the end during cleanup they put it all, all the balls in the these uh, pool noodle sticks in this bag and I put it behind this door. This is my storage area and I have a little hook um, on the back so that way um, that way I can have everything kind of right here um, and grab it really quick when I need it. So I'm not going completely into my storage area so that way I can keep my eyes on the kiddos. And we also do this with just soccer. So they just play soccer or they play hockey or I will put out, this is just a little like toddler, little tight slide. 
and it kind of moves around on my floor. So I just put out this rubber mat. These are from the Dollar Tree, and they're like, I think they're for like the kitchen to put under things so they don't slide. But I put it under things in my classroom. Like if I, um, if we're like, I don't know, if something's on the table and it's sliding around, I just put, cut up one of these and put this under it to kind of make it um, sit still. It's really good for kiddos too. If they're using a folder or something and their paper's sliding, um, it's a good um, for that too. But they just take turns going down the slide and it, it just gets some of that big energy out. And if I have the slide out, I'll also put out my little snowman throwing thing. So that way, um, I would just put the snowman over here where the soccer was. So I won't have both things at once, but I'll either, they'll either have soccer or um, slide and snowman. So that's kind of what's over here. And then in my art center, what I did is I just moved, I pushed my table back, kind of like against the wall, and I put out some kind of big blocks. So my little, my sons have a ton of these mega blocks, so I just bring them down here. And they're actually super, super cheap, and I know sometimes they're on clearance. I think you can get like a like a bag like this size for like like twenty five bucks. So, and sometimes parents, if you ask, they'll donate them to you if they have any big blocks from when they were little, just to get them out of their house. Um, so they'll be very happy about that. But yeah, so they just build here and they just build on the floor. If you don't want to do mega blocks, or maybe they get sick of mega blocks, which happens, I just put out cups. Um, in this spot and out so I would just put it kind of like right here and then they would just build with cups and they can build huge and big just something fun and different so that's another spot so they would have the choice of like so they would have a choice of like soccer and then they would get to like build with like duplo block or um, mega blocks and then over here in my discovery area underneath these tables are from Ikea I think they're called like the lap tables. Um, I keep sensory bins under here, and then I keep it under under that one too. And these are sensory bins we have, like their favorite ones, or maybe it's something we haven't done. And I just open up two of them, and they can just play in a sensory thing that's new and different. Um, so what? what so if somebody asked, how do they build with cups? So they kind of just like stack them on each other and make pyramids. They um, turn them upside down and stack them. So they're basically just kind of stacking those cups. So these are hole punches. Um, I, when I worked in my public school, um, Miss Betty, who worked our copy room, kept these for me. Or you can put like a box beside the copy room, the copy machine, and just ask teacher to collect them. And they are kind of messy, but they're super, super fun. And um, you, Office Max might even give them to you too, I bet if you ask really nicely. Um, but I just hide mini erasers in there hidden, and then I just have some little shovels, and then these are just, um, what are they? They're like grated cheese containers. So the tables are from Ikea. And then this is just one we did for a birthday party, and they loved it. And they, rice is really soothing, I think. So I put this one out, um, cause hopefully, you know, get them, um, relaxed after recess. And then, so somebody said, what are my tape lines? So if you look at my classroom, I'm going to kind of back up. You see how my tables are kind of in the middle? I usually set up some kind of obstacle course so they can go around the classroom. So <clears throat> last week I had out scooter boards and they got to um, crawl around on their scooter boards around the tables, kind of where the tape is right now, um, on their bellies. And I only, so I usually only do one or two at a time. It just depends on kind of how crazy they are and how they're doing that day. Scooter boards are also really fun if you have one kid to lay on their belly and then have the other one take one of those pool noodles. Sorry, my hand's shaking again. Take one of those pool noodles. So the kid laying on here lays on their belly and they hold the pool noodle and the other kiddo slowly pulls it. So that's really fun um, to do. But scooter boards, you gotta be, make sure you're watching them super, super close because it can get crazy really quick. <laughs>
So the other thing I do is I, this is what I'm doing this week. It's supposed to get cold again on Friday. Um, and I'm only three days a week. So, <clears throat> so I set up an obstacle course. So I got this um, tube at Target um, this week actually. Um, and it, it, you can like, it like collapses. And at the end, there's like Velcro. So I can just collapse it and hang it on the back of my door. Um, which that's, that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much. So they, I put a line here so that way, um, they kind of know where the tube stays. Um, so they crawl through the tube and then I have another tape so then they can like walk on the line or tiptoe. And then I have just some lines in the middle and I, this is just washi tape. Um, I know some people use that painter's tape, but I have trouble getting that off the floor sometimes. So this is just washi tape. It's like super easy to come up. Um, and the kids, if, if you're done with your obstacle course, have the kids help you peel it off. They love peeling the tape off. <laughs> and then, so right here, they just jump. I'm not gonna jump, because I'll probably um, shake you guys and give you guys a headache. And then I just have like a zigzag line for them to walk. And then some more hopping, so they hop over the lines. And then walk back. And then I put an X here, which means stop, to make sure that the other friend is through the tunnel. And if they get bored of the tunnel, I um, have a balance beam I put out. So this is actually just a two by four that I covered with duct tape so they don't get splinters. So you can just put this on here and they walk on the balance beam, which is really a two by four. It's like the cheapest balance beam ever, right? And I just put duct tape on the top and then the side so they wouldn't, and I did sand it down before I did that. Um, that way they won't get any splinters. But yeah, so I, this idea is actually not mine. I had an amazing OT at my school um, when I taught full day and this was her idea actually. We had one of these in our classroom because we had a kiddo who um, had a balance goal. So he um, used this and it was just such a great cheap balance themes because balance themes are, I don't know about you, but I think they're like outrageously priced. So, <laughs> so you can have a, one of these and you can cut them shorter too. Just cut them maybe like if you, have, if you have a smaller space, just cut it in half and maybe you can have two balance themes or you can have shorter ones. So you don't have to have one that's that long. So that's kind of what um, they do. They have a choice over in, by the cubbies. They have one in art. They'll have the sensory tables, whatever they might be, in discovery. Then they have like an around the room thing, whether it's a scooter board or some kind of obstacle course. And the tape really helps to kind of um, keep them on the right path. And I know some people are saying like, I wish my classroom was bigger and just maybe just have less things, but just try and get some bigger movements in. So I also have a block center. So some of the things I do in the block center are I bring in the hula hoops from outside. And I would either and I might just have the hula hoops in the block center. Don't ever be afraid to bring in the stuff from outside. Um, when I taught full day, um, we after school for their indoor recess. They played in the hallway because they brought the tri tricycles inside and they got to go up and down the hallway because we just super, super long hallway. So if you can, bring bicycles in. Like it's totally fun. Um, and then this is a huge, it's like a giant bowling set that I got from Walmart in the summer. So they, um, sometimes that's the block center choice or, but they, it works for them and I, they are clean. It's just, I've, I um, used them outside before. So I just put yoga mats out and then I have these yoga cards I got. They're called sorry, Kids Yoga Deck. And they come with all these different cards and I just put them on a book ring so they that way they can just grab a book ring and it gives them a visual of different yoga poses. And they can always do their own. And then I keep all the yoga mats in here that one's kind of coming and rolled, but they roll them up and we put all the yoga mats in here and we put those in the bottom and then they just carry this and I put them um, right in my storage area. And that says, can we see the long white table by the children's table? Oh, this one? 
Oh, so this is my sensory table that I normally have out, and it's just um, made with PVC pipe. I got um, the idea off the So this is what I always have out, and it's usually right here. I just move it for my obstacle. I try and have different things out, um, different sensory things out for indoor recess. That way it's still kind of exciting and fun, and, um, and that way too they don't get sick or bored with a sensory thing that's always out during center. So that way it's just something fun and different um, for inside recess. So hopefully they're a little bit more excited about it. So we always do on, so every Friday we do a dance party. <coughs> and everybody always asks what we do during our dance party. And it changes every week. So, some, so I'm going to kind of show you what we have out for our dance party which is what we do on Fridays during, for music and movement. And then during indoor recess in the circle areas where I'm standing right now, that um, I always put a dance party choice out. And sometimes I put two out. I, sometimes I let the kids pick. It's just kind of um, whatever works that day. So yeah, so, that, so I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to kind of show you all of our dance party stuff. Okay, so a lot of this stuff is from the dollar store or I made it. Six, with the exception of these blow up guitars. So these I got off Amazon and I'll put the link um, in there for those two. These are really fun and they're little. They're not like the full size ones. Um, and the little ones, I think they came in like a pack of 12. I think two have bit the dust. So um, I still have a lot left, you can see. I only have um, eight or nine kiddos a day. So um, everybody gets one, but when I taught full day, we had 18 kids, and I just didn't have the room to store 18 blow-up guitars. I think we had like seven or eight or 10. I think we started with 10, and then as they popped or whatever, um, the number went down, and they just had to take turns. So at the end of the song, they would give their air guitar to, or the blow-up guitar to a friend who didn't have one. Oh, and for music, I use um, kids' bop songs. So, so, so during dance party, I might put out blow-up guitars. Another fun thing to put out are these egg shakers. So I made these myself. So I just put wash, there's um, beans inside, and then I just put washi tape around them. And they just, you just shake them, and um, they're just fun like shakers, and you can like shake them high, and shake them low, all kinds of fun stuff. So there's those. And then we have musical instruments. So just your typical musical instruments. And um, sometimes during our dance party, we have a um, a parade around the classroom and we'll just, we'll just pick the line leader that day for that week. And they get to walk around the room and we'll have a parade during the dance party. We can't do that during indoor recess because I usually have something going on in the middle. So another thing we have are pom-poms. And these I got from the dollar store or Dollar Tree. So, and they do shed a little bit, but they're still super fun. And the boys love them too. So yeah, they just shake them and dance with them. So that's fun. And then what else? Oh, so these ribbon things. So these t normally, hold on. Oh, sorry. That's a big close up of my hand. So I typically, so I keep them all in a book ring. Let me kind of show you what they are. So it's, they're, so they're bracelets from the dollar store. And I just tied ribbon, <laughs> like gift wrap ribbon to the the um the bracelet like nothing like super fancy guys and these are i did these my first year teaching this is my 12th year teaching so and i keep them on a book ring and then i just unhook it and i keep it right here on my easel so they're kind of like out of sight out of mind but they're really easy to grab when i need them so all they are this one looks a little sad <laughs> They're a little old, but you can buy the fancy ones too, and those are really fun and beautiful, but um, when you first start teaching, you know, at least I didn't have a lot of money, so yeah, so I just tied on ribbon on to the string, and they just shake them, and you can um, do really fun things with them, like you can talk about doing them high and low, and using lots of those positional words, and going fast and slow, and things like that. So those are our ribbon bracelets. Um, right now, since it's winter, we're having a cotton or a snowball fight. And what I do is I just throw these around and then they have to throw one snowball at each other. They can have a whole bunch, a bunch in their hand, but they can only throw one, oops, <laughs> one at a time, which is great self-regulation because it's really hard to just throw one. 
And then, and here's my parachute. So bring your parachute inside. Don't be scared, guys, to bring your parachute inside and do it inside for either recess or music and movement, especially when it's cold. So these I just made this week because we needed something new for dance party. So I didn't, I don't have a teacher store by me. Well, I do kind of, but it's like 40 minutes away. So I wanted scarves. So I had some scarves that I wore like around my neck, but they, you know, they get like catches in them or whatever. And they like, they like snag. So I had some that snagged. And what I did is I just cut them into squares and I cut and then I, have you ever cut fabric before you like cut it and then you rip it? And then I did, I noticed that worked better and I didn't have as many of those like little pieces that pull off. And then, so I have all these beautiful, pretty scarves. For, and we're gonna use these this Friday, or uh, yeah, on Friday for dance party. And you can throw them, and they can catch them. They can ball them up, and they can throw them at each other because it doesn't hurt, because there's no hard pieces on them. But yeah, these are just scarves I had from me. And it's just, I picked scarves that are really light material. You can see this one's kind of like, kind of see-through. I want to say these are even from like the Target dollar spot. You know when they have scarves for holiday? Like this one was probably like a St. Patrick's Day one. And this one was probably like a, um, a like fall one. Um, but yeah, I just, they snagged and I was going to pitch them. And I was like, you know what? I can use these for music and movement. So woohoo. So now we have fun scarves to play with. And then, so I keep kind of like a box of goodies. So like how I fit all of this is I just gonna put it all in these little cubbies right here. I just kind of like stuff it all in. That way my music and movement stuff is like super close so I have it when I need it. Um, shower puffs is gonna both. Ooh, that would be super fun. And then this is, oh, ice skates. So these are just paper plates. And then, and there you can see they're, <laughs> they're getting dirty. So I have special paper plates that I just keep up here for ice skates. And what they do is they just put them on their feet. And they slide around the cup, around, around circle. So it's a great way to get, um, make, use those muscles, get some energy out. And it takes a lot of balance too, because they're having to push and slide their foot. Kind of like my basket of fun, and then I have more of these from the um, from the dollar store. Um, you can use them as start and finish lines if you're having races. Um, you can have them. You can use them for an obstacle course, and they can like have it be a path they can walk on. And I like them because they don't like if you um, like I've seen those obstacle courses on like Pinterest and stuff that have like twirl and spin, which I think would be great. But I think they would slip on that paper, or that paper would probably like slip on the ground. So these would be, these are great because they're rubber and they stick. So I have a couple colors. And like I said, these are from the um, dollar spot. And you can cut them up too and make like, you can use them for like sit spots for circle. And then I just have also some like random balls. So sometimes for a transition, I'll have them tell me something and they get to roll the ball across the circle to a friend. These are just different ones. This is a koosh ball. These are most of these are from like um like the Target dollar spot. But sometimes they um if, so oh forgot to tell you so at my circle I have this rainbow line around the edge. So sometimes we do ga games where they have to stand on the rainbow, and sometimes I'll say oh Ray stand on the on the on the blue, or maybe everybody will stand on the the um the green. Cause like let's say. At, we're doing a beanbag toss and we're practicing throwing it back to each other. If I have one group stand on the green and then their partner stands on the other green, then they're close. And I can be like, okay, if you're, everybody move back to the rainbow, my tape lines are already there for my gross motor games. And they're great for circle because they can see where they have to sit too. So I, I use um, this grid for gross motor games too. Or maybe I'll be like, can you hop, hop over the lines? Um, things like that. So maybe I'll have like one group will sit um, on the, the what, what color is this? Green. And the other partner will sit on the rainbow and they'll have to roll the balls back. Well, that was a bad toss. You can tell I was, I did not do sports. <laughs> so they have to roll it back and forth to each other. 
Ooh, Kara says wax paper for ice skating. Ooh, that's a really good idea too. Thanks, Kara. And I also have bean bags. So these are alphabet bean bags. And they're little ones. And they're, um, if you go on YouTube, they have a whole bunch of bean bag songs. And there's like a bean bag CD and a lot of the teaching, um, like Lakeshore magazines and things. Those are really fun. And they have an uppercase on one side and a lowercase on the other. And then these are just those foam spots. But I put them out sometimes, like maybe I'll put them all, all out all around the rainbow line. Like I'll put one here. And then maybe I'll, I'll put one. Oh, sorry guys. Like I'll put one there and there and all the way around. And maybe they have to hop over them. Or, or um, like when I say, if we're doing like a freeze song, they'll have to stop on there. Um, yeah. And then these are just more spots. These are just a little bit thicker. I forgot where I got them. But they're just a little bit thicker. And they stick to the floor well. I think they're more of like a stickier rubber. And then the last thing we do, and this would obviously have to be a her room is carpet and what would work on that. So we actually do the ice skating with the paper plates on this rug. And when I did full day, my room is carpeted too and the, you can slide on the carpet just like you would um, on, on wood or tile or whatever. So yeah, so you can totally um, ice skate on carpet if your room's carpeted. And you can put washi tape on carpet too, because I did that all the time. Just know if you use duct tape, it's gonna leave a sticky residue. So I have this rope, I think it's from like the hardware section at like Walmart. And we use it for tug of war. So everybody will sit in a line and I'll just put it out. And I have a knot so everybody knows where the middle is. And everybody sit. So my rule is, hug the rope game. Um, my rule is they have to sit crisscross. And um, what I do is like, I'll. They all like line up in a line and they have to sit crisscross and then they um, they pull back and forth. And I obviously, if, if we use tug of tug tug the rope game, um, I supervise it. That way it doesn't get crazy and it is involving a rope. So I don't want any like it to get twisted around a foot or anything like that or heaven forbid around a neck. So, and it's a really thick rope. So don't do tug of, tug of tug the rope game with anything that's thin. I would definitely use like a thick, thick, super thick rope. But yeah, it's I think it's from the hardware section at Walmart. You can also use the rope for putting it on um, on the floor as part of a um, obstacle course, like putting it on the floor and say they have to um, walk on it, kind of like a balance beam, or um, they have to just kind of like guide them, kind of like to where to go, as like a visual of like, okay, here's where you go next, and make it like like a, like a snake like going up and down or, or like back and forth. So yeah. So though that, oh, oh, one more thing, I forgot. So my little guy's got this, it's like a night sky thing for Christmas from a grandma. And how fun would this be to use for dance party? Like we could turn off, you know, some of the lights and then we could have our night sky and we could be dancing um, in the stars for our dance party. So. Um, I think I'm going to bust that out on Friday too with the new scarves. So to keep it fun and interesting. So those, that's kind of what we do during inside recess. And remember, if you are introducing new things and new things to do during inside recess, only, oh, I'm crooked, sorry. Only introduce like one new thing at a time. Otherwise it kind of turns into chaos. That way the new thing you're introducing as an inside recess choice, you can be there or be there as much as needed, and the other things, they kind of know what to do and know those expectations. And if you need to, if you're um, introducing something new, like maybe like the scooter boards or the um, the like um, the thing that goes around that my middle, I'm going to model it first. So like I'll model going around and I'll talk out loud what I'm doing. So I'll be like, okay, now I'm going to hop with my two feet over these lines. Now I'm going to use my tiptoes and walk on the tape. Oh, there's an X. I need to stop and make sure all my friends are through the tunnel and then I'll crawl through the tunnel. So model things first, only introduce one new thing at a time. And oh, I forgot. I have one more thing. On one of my doors, I put, put letters up and I just taped them to the door. And then I have these beach balls and what they're going to do is they throw the beach ball at the letter and hopefully say the letter, say the sound, or maybe they're just talking to their friends about the letters they're, they're hitting. Um, just a kind of a easy way to add in some literacy skills. 
and um, an easy way to get in some throwing skills too. And these beach balls, I think are just from like the dollar store. And beach balls are super great to use inside because they don't, they're not hard, they're not thick, they don't break anything and they're cheap. So if one pops, you can grab another one too. That's all I have for you guys tonight. Well, you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for joining me. Oh, and we do do, up on my big screen, sometimes I do turn on Go Noodle too during inside recess and um, yeah, if you haven't, if you don't know about Go Noodle, it's just GoNoodle.com. It's free to set up an account, and they're super, super fun. Um, my kiddos love the um, Popsico, and they love the two guys that are the um, that do the songs on there, and they also love the the Zumba, the Zumba songs on Go Noodle. So yeah, so you guys have a fabulous night. So see you guys soon.